In this video, we're going to look at a small segment of metamorphic rocks with the goal of being able to distinguish their different physical properties and to be able to identify them. This is a small selection of metamorphic rocks. There are many, many other kinds. However, this is a good selection for beginners to be able to identify. In order to identify all kinds of rocks, one has to look at the texture and the composition. So as we go through each one, we'll demonstrate the properties that you can see. This first sample is a slate. This one is a dark red color. Slate can be a number of different colors, most often dark gray or black. A slate is a very fine grained rock. You cannot see any visible grains in a rock such as this. It does have a very, very strong planar fabric to it. The foliation that's present is clearly visible and easy to see. Here's another example of a slate. This one is a different color, but otherwise very, very similar. It has a Fairly nice gray color to it. Again, very fine grain, no visible crystals in this rock type. Again, there is a very strong foliation present in this rock and you can see the planar structure of it quite easily. The next rock sample is called a schist. This is similar to the slate in some ways, but has some distinct differences as well. First of all, the grain size is larger and it produces a sheen on the surface, even in fairly fine grain samples, which is fairly easy to see in reflected light. In this case, there are also larger crystals present in the finer grain matrix. These are crystals of garnet, crystals that grow during metamorphism, which are larger than the surrounding finer grain matrix, are often called porphyroblasts, and this sample has very nice porphyroblasts of garnet. Here's another sample of a schist. In this one, the mica grains, which define the foliation, are much coarser grained, and you can see individual crystals much more readily. However, it does not contain any porphyroblasts of garnet or any other large crystals that would have grown during metamorphism, other than the micas. This next rock sample is a gneiss. In addition to being foliated, it is also strongly layered. It has a compositional banding to it, defined by the mafic and felsic minerals. In this case, quartz and feldspars are the dominant felsic minerals, and the mafic minerals here are largely biotite mica. The foliation is very clear and easy to see in the banding, the compositional layering that is present in the mineral grains. The next two samples of rock are non-foliated rocks. This first one is a marble. Marble is made of calcium carbonate. Minerals calcite and dolomite are the most common. Other minerals can occur in them, but calcite and dolomite are the main ones. Visible crystals are usually present, unless they are very fine-grained, which is possible. Because it is made of calcite, it does not easily have a foliation to it. Calcite is not a platy mineral, unlike the micas and clays that form the, the schist and the slate. Calcite grains and dolomite minerals are not readily formed into a platy planar structure. Because the rock is largely made of calcite, it is very soft and can easily be scratched with a knife. In addition, it has a very strong reaction to dilute hydrochloric acid. Here is another sample of marble. This one has a very different color. It's very white. Many marbles do come in different colors. They can often be white or pink or gray. Sometimes even more exotic colors like blue. Again, because it is dominantly made of carbonate minerals, it is very easy to scratch with a knife blade. And again, it also displays a very strong reaction with dilute hydrochloric acid. The last sample is another non-foliated rock. This is the rock called quartzite. Superficially, quartzite looks very similar to marble. However, it is 
made almost entirely of quartz rather than calcite or dolomite. As a result, it has very different properties. It is very, very hard and cannot be scratched with a knife, and it has no reaction with dilute hydrochloric acid. It has a very uniform texture and often visible grains. Another difference between the marble and the quartzite is that if the grains are large enough, one could see cleavage planes in the calcite grains in the marble, and one might be able to even see conchoidal fracture in the grains of quartz in the quartzite, but the grains would have to be quite large to see that. It would be difficult to see with the unaided eye. So that concludes our demonstration of these five metamorphic rocks and how to identify them based on texture and composition.